Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Bite Size History on History with Audrey D. In today's episode, we are going to be looking at a few key terms to help us better understand our studies of ancient Egypt. And we are going to be looking at what life might have been like for ancient Egyptians as well. Now, if you like Bite Size History on History with Audrey D so far, please make sure you are hitting that like and subscribe button. Also, please make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I drop a new lesson. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Patreon as History with Audrey D as well. All right, let's go ahead and get into our lesson on the ancient Egyptian lifestyle and some key terms to help us better understand ancient Egypt as a whole. Now, first things first, let's go ahead and take a quick look at our learning goal, our learning target, and our standards for today's lesson. Our standard for today's lesson is again going to be standard two, which is to describe the emergence of early civilizations. Our learning goal for today's lesson is going to be to identify the characteristics of civilizations and our learning target is going to be to describe agriculture, calendar, pyramids, art and architecture, hieroglyphic writing, record keeping, and literature such as the Book of the Dead and Mummification. Now, we are not going to cover all of those terms, but we will be covering some of the key aspects of ancient Egyptian life. And let's go ahead and take a look at what those terms are going to be. So in this lesson, we're going to be focusing on the questions of what important things did the ancient Egyptians create? And we're also going to be looking at how each one of the terms that we cover applies to the seven characteristics of civilization. Now, the terms that we're going to be looking at today include hieroglyphics, dynasty, unification, theocracy, pharaoh, bureaucrat, pyramids, role, as in a person's role, and record keeping. Let's go ahead and take a look at how each one of these terms relates to ancient Egypt in a little bit more detail. Now, our first term that we're looking at is hieroglyphics. Hieroglyphics are a writing system made up of a combination of pictures and sound symbols. A dynasty is a line of rulers from one family. Unification is to unify or unite, or to bring together in one unit. Now this relates to the unification of ancient Egypt's northern and southern regions or kingdoms. A theocracy is a government run by religious leaders. The pharaoh was the ruler of Egypt, and a bureaucrat, similar to modern times, was a government official. The pyramids are believed to be great stone tombs built for the Egyptian pharaohs. A person's role in society was the function or part an individual fills in that society. And record keeping is the keeping of records or preserving information in some permanent form, such as written documents. This was also practiced by ancient Egyptians. Now that we have a bit more background on these key terms, let's go ahead and take a look at what life was like for ancient Egyptians. Egyptians used hieroglyphics to keep records. These records were often written on papyrus. As we discussed in our last episode, papyrus is a reed plant that grew wild along the Nile River and was also dried and used for rope, baskets, sandals, rafts, and even paper. Well, ancient Egypt was actually divided into three kingdoms, the Old, the Middle, and the New Kingdoms. The Old Kingdom began in 2613 BCE with the first king of the fourth dynasty, King Sneferu. It ended during the reign of King Nechikare in 2181 BCE. He was the last ruler of the Old Kingdom. The Middle Kingdom began in 2061 BCE with the reign of Mentuhotep II and ended in 1800 BCE during the reign of Sobekhotep I. Sobekhotep was also the first king of the 13th dynasty. 
And last but not least, the New Kingdom. Now, the New Kingdom began in 1570 BCE with the founder of the 18th dynasty, King Amos I. This kingdom or time frame in Egyptian history actually holds the names of some of the more well-known Egyptian kings, such as Amenhotep, first through fourth. We have Akhenaten, Tutankhamun, Aksenamun, and multiple generations of Ramses. It ended during the reign of Smendes I in 1051 BCE. But by 4000 BCE, Egypt was actually divided into the kingdoms of Upper and Lower Egypt. This division was not set up the way we would think of Upper and Lower Egypt today, however. Upper Egypt was actually located in the south because it was where the Nile River began and flowed north toward the Mediterranean Sea. Lower Egypt was therefore located in Northern Egypt, closer to the Nile River Delta. Egypt became a unified kingdom during the reign of King Narmer in 3100 BCE. He led his army from the lands of Upper, aka Southern Egypt, to Lower, aka Northern Egypt, and conquered the kingdoms of Lower Egypt, thereby unifying Egyptian lands into one kingdom. Nanara's kingdom lasted long after his death due to his dynasty, which allowed his sons and grandsons to be his successors. We will be discussing King Narmer in a bit more detail in a later lesson when I focus on each individual key ruler of ancient Egypt. Now, we can't talk about Egypt without discussing the pharaohs, and Egyptians actually believed that the pharaoh was a god. Egyptians believed the pharaoh was a god on earth and considered him a religious leader as well as a political leader. The pharaoh held total power as the ruler of the kingdom. The building of the pyramids is believed to have been in honor of the pharaohs as well. Egyptian rulers were originally titled as king. However, the term or title of pharaoh became used later on as it meant great house. Egyptians were extremely loyal to their pharaoh and obeyed his commands. The pharaoh appointed bureaucrats, which would supervise the major projects in Egypt, which included dam repairs and construction, irrigation canal construction and repairs, and brick granary construction and maintenance so grains could be stored from larger harvests to prevent starvation in years of poor harvests. Pharaohs were also believed to be the son of Ra, the Egyptian sun god, and the pharaoh was believed to be an actual god on earth who protected Egypt. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what life might have been like in ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt grew to a population size of about 5 million people. Most Egyptians lived in the Nile River Valley and Delta areas. There was also a social class structure in ancient Egypt, which included an upper class, middle class, and lower class. So in our pyramid structure of social classes in ancient Egypt, we have the Pharaoh at the very top. The Pharaoh was a supreme ruler considered divine by the people, lived in a palace and they were buried in pyramids or tombs. Now the upper class consisted of priests, nobles, and army commanders. They lived in elegant homes, wore fashionable clothes, and they also had servants. In the middle class, we see scribes, merchants, traders, business owners, and artisans who made cloth, jewelry, pottery, metal goods. They lived in small homes and they dressed simply. Now, farmers are in our fourth tier and farmers worked on land owned by the wealthy. They lived in houses of mud bricks. They had a limited diet and herders tended to flocks of goats or sheep and they actually had the opportunity to improve their lives. And our final group is the unskilled workers. Now, this is the base of our pyramid. Unskilled workers are manual laborers they lived in crowded cities and mud brick houses. However, they also had the opportunity to improve their lives. The lower class was the largest of all the social classes and contained the farmers and unskilled workers. People in the same social class 
usually have similar occupations and they also have similar amounts of wealth. Family was actually the backbone of ancient Egypt and it was the most important social group of which you were a member. The father was the head of the household and mothers and women in general actually had more rights than those of other early civilizations. They had the ability to own property, buy and sell goods, and get divorced. Wealthy women served as priests, managed temples, and performed religious ceremonies. Mothers would teach their daughters how to sew, cook, and run a household, as these are skills they would need when they reached their teenage years. Children didn't actually go to school. However, they would be taught life skills at home and they got to play games which included board games, they played with dolls, and they had games with leather balls. Egyptians married during their teenage years and then started their own families as well. The clothing and housing would actually vary from the class structures. So when we look at upper class clothing, we can see that men and women both had jewelry. They also had more so decorated clothing. Middle and lower class clothing was a little bit more plain. Now, middle class, they still had some ornamentation, but really it was more so within the clothing itself. They did not have as much in the way of jewelry. Now, lower class people actually had a different style of clothing altogether. The lower classes actually had far more plain clothing. They did not have the same ornamentation on their clothes and they had less clothing in general that they would wear as garments. When looking at Egyptian homes, they had a flat roof, which was often used for eating and sleeping. They also had small windows, which helped to keep light in but also kept sand out. Most Egyptians built their houses with bricks made of sun-dried mud from the Nile River. Grain storage was oftentimes seen as a mud brick shed that was built onto the property of the home as well. Uh, this made it to where they didn't have as much of a rodent problem because that was the biggest issue that we would often find with grains. Usually there would be an entrance room and then there would also be a bedroom, a room for social activities. So the front entrance of the home usually had a space for social activities. There would also be a bedroom and a kitchen and a storage space. So there was very little furniture in ancient Egyptian homes of the lower and middle classes. So this is basically the this is basically the outline of the typical worker or farmer who lived in ancient Egypt. Middle classes would have a as we can see in the imagery, the middle classes would have actually had a little bit nicer home with more ornamentation and also more furniture. Lower classes definitely did not have as much furniture in their homes and their homes were predominantly made of mud brick. When we look at the wealthy homes, as we can see in these images, we have a combination of palaces, such as the Pharaoh's palace, and then we also have other homes that are far more ornate, and they're also decorated with painted exteriors, similar to what we saw in ancient Mesopotamia when we looked at the homes of the nobility. So upper class housing, as we can see, had a much nicer landscaping, and it also allowed the Egyptians to have more so like size of a mansion. So these mansions had about 25 to 30 rooms and were almost castle-like. So this would have been the homes of nobility, the priests, the people living in the upper class, as well as military people. And then we have the highest, which would have been the pharaoh, and his house would have been nicer than everyone else's. Now that is it for our run through of what life was most likely like for ancient Egyptians of the variety of classes that they had. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope you have a little bit better understanding of how ancient Egyptians most likely lived as well as some of the key terms that we're going to need to know throughout this portion of the series where we cover everything on ancient Egypt. If you did like this episode, please make sure you are hitting that like and subscribe button. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Patreon as History with Audrey D. 
And if you have any comments about ancient Egypt, or if you have any suggestions as to what you would like to learn about next, please make sure you put those in the comment section below and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you in our next lesson.